So uh, we're still on algebraic expressions. We're still on 1.2 in Algebra 2. Um, so now we're on example 5. Um, when you have two terms that are alike, I have uh, two x's there, right? I have an x and an x, but I have eight x's and I have five x's. Um, we could use the distributive property here to take out what they both have in common, if you want to look at it that way, and they both have an x in common, so I can pull them out, and I can add those two items together, and 8 plus 5 is 13, so I get 13x. Or, you can just look at this very simply and say, if you have eight x's, and you have five x's, you have 13 x's. This is simply adding expressions together that are alike, uh, common terms. Okay, If you had eight apples and you had five apples, you have 13 apples. So if you had eight x's and five x's, you would have 13 x's. Down here with this example, okay, um, once again, we can just combine together what is the same. Okay, and what you need to realize is x squared and x are not the same thing. These two items are not the same. I cannot put an x squared and an x together. But over here, I have a negative one x squared and I have a three x squared. So I can combine those two items, right? A three x squared minus one x squared is two x's squared. There is nothing else that combines with that x, so I just bring the x along for the ride. I just have to rewrite it over there again. In this problem, I need to use the distributive property, which we talked about. So to use the distributive property, I should take 2 times x and get 2x, and 2 times 1 and get positive 2. Then I take the negative 3, because it's a negative here. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. Negative 3 times negative 4 is positive 12. So now I can combine my like terms. I have 2x's and negative 3x's, so I have a negative x. And 2 and 12 is 14. And there's your answer, negative x plus 14. We're just combining like terms. Oh, thought you were going to tell me what a bad Googleizer I am. A what? Equivalent. Are you Googleizer? One who speaks at funerals? Basically, it means equals. Okay? If you ever hear me saying the uh, phrase uh, equivalent, it's the same as saying equals. If you hear me saying equals, it's equivalent. It's really all it is. So, uh, this is just an example. 2x plus 7x equals 9x, right? They're equivalent to each other because 2x and 7x is 9x. 13x equals 3x plus 10x. Those are equivalent as well. Um, 2x plus 9 equals 13. 2x plus 9 is equivalent to 13. We would just solve that. Fruit spray? Fruit spray? Sure. Example 6. You want to buy either a CD or a cassette as a gift for each of 10 people. CDs cost $13 each and cassettes cost $8 each. Write an expression for the total amount you must spend, then evaluate the expression when four of the people get CDs. Okay, so we are going to make CDs be X, we're going to make cassettes be Y. So, you are buying um, CDs and the CDs cost $13. Since 13 is what the CDs cost, it's why it's 13X. The cassettes cost $8, that's why it is 8 with the Y. And to find what the total price would be, we need to add those two items together because we were talking about the total. So then I need to evaluate the expression when four of the people get CDs. Well, no problem. Since X and Y stand for the number of CDs and cassettes and the total number of them is 10, we also know this. I know that I'm buying a total of 10, right, a total of 10 people stuff. And X stands for CDs and Y stands for um, um, cassettes. So if I solve this for Y, I end up getting Y equals 10 minus X. The reason I'm doing this is I'm trying to find an expression that works. And currently in this expression, I have two different variables. I have an X and a Y. That's not going to help me out much. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to find this all in terms of one variable. And if this is Y, right, if this stuff here is all Y, 10 minus X, I can plug that in up here for Y and get this. This is why it works. 
the reason it works is think about it like this if I bought four CDs then how many cassettes did I buy well most of you would know if there's ten total people ten minus four is six so I bought six cassettes if I bought three CDs most of you would realize and go oh that means he bought ten, uh, seven cassettes because you're subtracting right you're doing ten minus whatever the number is that's what you're physically doing so ten minus whatever the number is that's how I'm getting this ten minus whatever the number you're subtracting is so this is the expression to solve and it says now solve it for 4. So when we know that we're buying 4 CDs, so I plug a 4 in. Well, 10 minus 4 is 6, and 13 times 4 is 52. 8 times 6 is 48, so 52 plus 48 is 100. So it would cost $100 to buy 4 CDs and 6 cassettes. If a cassette still cost $8, my goodness, that's all I'm going to say. So I'm going to say about that. And I don't even know if cassettes still exist, so I don't even really know how uh, relevant this is to you currently at this time. But um, maybe some of you have no idea what a cassette is, which would be kind of bad as well. Ron, uh, where are you? Uh, I'm in a glass case of emotion. So there's your homework. Um, 1.2, dealing with mainly combining expressions and combining like terms and simplifying the expressions. So if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to email me or check through some more examples that we have um, on my website or Moodle site. Oh, thank you very much.